Hello, welcome to the Photo Op Podcast. I'm your host, Ben Lucas. And I'm Stuart Marlantis. And this is Photo Op, the podcast where we talk about all things photo and video. Yes, we do. So, we're going to start off today with a listener question. Yes, from Nathan. Uh, he's making the jump to mirrorless, which is a, a big jump. It's less of a big jump nowadays, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would still consider it significant if you've already got kit. Yeah, that's true. I have made that jump. Yeah, yeah. he doesn't specify if he has kit, but first, let's get to his actual questions before I, we talk about that. I actually do know, Nathan, he's got a decent amount of kit. Uh, okay. He's starting off. He's he's still starting off, but he's not, he's not starting fresh. Okay. Well, thankfully, the mirrorless market is much more robust than it was uh, when it was a bigger leap earlier on so we can help you with that so he's long story short getting into mirrorless it was cameras. a long question so we're going to shorten it down <laughs> for you and uh one he asks is there a general hobbyist camera um that we would recommend and uh, for mirrorless and then also if specific mirrorless brands uh fit particular photographic styles better better than others let's start with question number two no <laughs> uh, no, you should be able to shoot in whatever style on whatever camera, <laughs> uh, <laughs> pretty un- much. Unless you shoot video. Well, yeah. Yeah, so video, um, if you're talking about pure photographic styles, no. If you're talking about video versus photo, then sure. Um, Panasonic, both their Micro Four Thirds and their Full Frame are very video oriented. And Panasonic, Panasonic has even announced recently that they're going to lean into that harder um, over time. So they, you may see them shift very much away from any photo capabilities in their camera, which yeah. I'm cool with. It's a better tool for the job, potentially, as a result. Um, and to some degree, Sony uh, Sony has a bunch of different body types, depending on what you're doing. So they're all arounders. Is there a seven series? There are series is for like maximizing your photo resolution. Um, basically over anything else and the s series is more for video so low resolution stills uh but very high quality um uh low noise video as a result so uh sony it depends uh or you can get the a1 which does everything uh but is also sixty five hundred dollars for the body so not a hobbyist i I would (laughs) say though that if c c300 or red are not in your budget then sony is the absolute best bang for your buck so you might look at a sony body and go "Ooh, that's super expensive well let's we're here to tell you (laughs) we're here to tell you let's just say uh it is it is a lot less than it could be oh yeah oh yeah um (laughs) so yeah uh does a specific brand fit a specific style unless you're shooting video not really um for a general hobbyist camera (sighs) depends on how you define hobbyist <laughs> and it depends on what you already have so you you said that you know Nathan. he does already have a little bit of kit so what kit does he have already i want to say it's a basic a basic starter uh low level dslr but i can't remember what brand okay, i can't remember the brand so the answer may be uh it may depend on if you want to use any of the existing glass that you have on whatever mirrorless camera body you're buying so i know that uh canon and nikon have offered uh adapters basically to go from their old glass uh to their new mirrorless bodies that you may want to stay with that same brand um but i know canon specifically has been killing it with their rf lenses they have so Mm -hmm. um if your stuff is old and you you're looking to upgrade anyway you might as well just get the good stuff yeah. uh, all the mirrorless lenses are a lot cheaper than full body lenses anyway yes yes that's true so you're getting much better glass for less price mm-hmm. because uh mirrorless is just yeah just cheaper i i would say that my personal recommendation for like full frame getting into mirrorless if you've got the cash to start at this level is something in the a7 line from sony i shoot with an a7 III a lot a7 IV is out now but you can it's a little bit more expensive the a7 III is still fantastic all around her and it does video it does photos really well it has pretty good low light performance um decent resolution i, I have a quick story about the a7 uh yep. low light performance mm-hmm. so i once shot a wedding and um it was at the aquarium and we go into one of those like t- you you know the yeah. aquarium fairly well i was there 
there before we recorded this today. <laughs> so we go into like one of those tunnels that um that basically bridges two of the underground yep. um tanks, and it uh, it is just pitch black and the couple is going to sign their documents here because this is like where like the rotunda table thing is set up and i say just uh before you do anything give me a second i need to get my flashes out so i turn around start digging through my camera bag go to grab my speed light and the videographer just laughed at me he's like no i'm good I've got an A7. <laughs> you know what? Fine. Okay. Can't all be you. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. They, it, it's literally night vision goggles on yeah. those things. So, if you're starting from zero, the A7 three or four, depending on your budget, is it, with a Tamron like 28 to 75 is my like go-to. Just like it'll do a lot of stuff pretty well. Um, but I'm not here to you know bash on any camera brands the canon depends on your budget or what you're a hobbyist for because yeah. i it, i'm a landscape photographer and a wildlife photographer i'm gonna give very different vastly things. wild mm-hmm. difference uh yeah. recommendations so, so that's my super safe recommendation for i don't know so this will do kind of a lot of things relatively well and you can grow from there but canon's mirrorless stuff has been really impressive nikon's mirrorless stuff has actually been really pr- impressive um so it just depends hopefully that's helpful though um also we don't know your budget so if your budget is like five hundred dollars um then i would say or, buy a used camera yeah buy a used camera yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah i mean the the camera that we're recording this on right now which we've talked about many times with panasonic g85 it's kind of old as far as cameras are considered and it still works great and actually it shoots pretty decent stills not amazing but considering you can get these for practically a couple hundred dollars nowadays yeah. like that's a lot of bang for your buck so yeah um i keep saying that i can get it for about 500 bucks because that's how much i got it for but i can't <laughs> find them for less than six to eight hundred right now yeah they're kind of weirdly expensive just... and you should just get a g100 at that price because that's the like multiple bodies newer and you can get it for almost the same price i just saw a g100 brand new the other day for six hundred dollars yeah so, yeah um, so maybe they're like too old now and they're kind of difficult to find. Just get whatever the G something is newer. Whatever so G Panasonic, yeah. 95, G100, G120. I don't know what's out now, but um, but yeah, those are good bang for your buck for a video. And stills are competent. Not amazing, but competent. If you're honest. Yeah, I, I I definitely have used this as a stills camera when I've gone traveling abroad, mm-hmm. but um It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's not my favorite. Um I would say probably avoid sony crop i used to recommend that a lot for hobbyists um they haven't updated them in a while i kind of am worried that sony is slowly getting out of the crop business so i hesitate to recommend that you'll see that a lot where people are like get an a6400 or 6500 or 60 whatever hundred. Nah. i don't know so, just go all the way <laughs> so yeah one thing that uh used to be the common common uh phrase was just full frame full yeah. frame is better because full frame is better mm-hmm. but um i actually have one friend who he shoots sports and wildlife mm-hmm. and he preferred the crop sensor bodies because he's like hey look it's cheaper my glass is cheaper and i get free extra range yeah. when i'm trying to zoom in on something in 18 megapixel at the time that was the standard in 18 megapixel 7d is the same as your 18 megapixel 5d except it's half the price and i get an extra 1.3 zoom i feel like though you should go all the way like you should either go micro four thirds so you get the maximum possible benefit for like your zoom lenses or you should go full frame like the crop is kind of i i gotta say i'm i'm not a huge fan of the four thirds just aspect ratio yeah Yeah, i I still prefer the four six Mm -hmm. anyway but that's our recommendation hopefully that helps uh it's it's a difficult question weirdly <laughs> yeah but hopefully that helps so uh thank wh- you nathan if, if anybody else has questions hello at photo op dot show is our email address yes absolutely and if you enjoy uh stuff like this hearing us prattle on about our thoughts and opinions well you've come to the right show uh but you can support us at patreon.com slash nom creative uh, so uh today's topic are modern photos too perfect no next question <laughs> yeah where, where, where did this come from i think it, i think we're riffing off an article or something so we are riffing yeah. off an article but we're also just kind of i think riffing off of a topic of conversation in general around i think there's a lot of nostalgia for the filmic look like you see people applying filters and shooting with film and shooting you see even increasingly people shooting with like earlier 
uh, digital cameras for like a early 2000s kind of look to their photos. Like this is an increasingly popular thing. Nope, I and hate so, it. That's part of what we're ripping off is like <laughs> is like our modern photos too perfect. We seem to be regressing <laughs> to like even like crappy early digital cameras, which I don't think anybody likes except I don't know maybe TikTokers now. But no, um, they're yeah. D- I I can s- understand the nostalgia for the film look because the light leaks and the film grain mm-hmm. and the color palette of um you know like Portra four hundred yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. like that mm-hmm. um. There, there is a look and a style and a feel that I can understand the nostalgia for. But early digital, no. Why would we ever yeah, go back? That's popped up a lot recently, Un- though. <laughs> unless you pick up like an old like. Um, there's one thing I saw where someone modded out a Game Boy camera and started shooting concerts with yes. it. Yes. So I bought a Game Boy camera to do <laughs> basically that. I haven't done it yet. Maybe it'll be in a show in the future. But I did buy a Game Boy camera uh, because they're surprisingly cheap. Yeah. So I was why like, not? sure, I'll experiment with it. Um, it's pretty fun. Uh, it's quite difficult to get the photos off of them, uh, turns out, but it is fun. Yeah. Um, so yeah, our modern photos too perfect. We're kind of bouncing off of all that kind of stuff. What is going on? Why do people have nostalgia for this? You know, I, speaking of like the, the nostalgia for, for film, which I also understand. Um, I understand it, but I don't personally have it. I hate it. Yeah, and I but I almost prefer that over early digital. I look at early digital stuff and I'm like, I wish they just shot this on film because yeah. this could be scanned in much higher quality. But since it was shot in early digital, that's what you get. That's it. You're stuck. See, not even not even the megapixel count. There's just something about the the early digital. Um, like it didn't render skin tones no, the way that it should. Was and really bad. yeah, compression. Yeah. We had a lot of uh banding issues, Color and banding. uh, there'd be like a little bit of color splotching on skins where that person's skin is not actually splotchy. Yeah. That's the sensor. Um, we d- you definitely see it in your highlights, your shadows, and your reds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cameras, I mean, cameras still sometimes struggle with rendering reds, but early digital was so bad. Ba- basically, <laughs> look at any look at any TV show about politics, and if you see the character wearing a red blazer, mm-hmm. notice how it, it goes absolutely neon mm-hmm. and does not show any no of details. the detail. That is early digital for you. Yeah. And it's kind of a bummer because early, early digital, like this is even bit like big in big, you know, like film industry stuff uh, where like early TV and even some films, uh, well, not early TV, but like early TV that was shot on early digital and films that were shot on early digital, even though at the time they had budget to do the best digital they could at the time. They're kind of stuck and you see a lot of stuff where it like hasn't been remastered in 4K and, and still looks kind of crappy. And you're like, why? You know, and the see, answer is it was shot in early digital. If we have an sucks. old film reel. That old film reel can be scanned Re-scanned. and retouched mm-hmm. and upscaled and remastered. If yeah. we have an old digital, we're stuck with whatever yeah. it got or you shot on you fix it at great cost so like um like the the next generation uh, star trek the next generation a lot of that was shot on early digital and uh and as a result it looked really bad and so what people had to do was spend a lot of money and a lot of time vfx yeah everything digitally remastering everything at great cost and maybe it's worked out now but i remember at the time uh i remember relatively recently uh there was I was reading about it and uh, it was stated that at least for a long time, maybe to this day, that never paid off financially because it was so expensive to go back and That's hand retouch right. everything. So, uh, yeah. So this even even bites like big industry stuff uh, when they had the budget to get the best they possibly could at the time. So I don't know. TikTokers shooting on early digital. Why? why <laughs> i mean Shoot tiktok resolution is Fair so enough. small whatever yeah. um no i i don't have any nostalgia for the light leaks or anything like that i do it mm. occasionally if i'm trying to if i'm shooting like a wedding photo or a boudoir photo where i'm just trying to add a little bit of zhuzh to something that isn't particularly interesting mm-hmm. but generally i stay stay away from that kind of stuff. Um, Although one thing that I will say is I think we have definitely hit the threshold uh, where we have enough megapixels. Now, do we though? Yes. Yes. Here's, 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 what if I need to digitally crop? 
<laughs> here's here's the thing else I'll, I'll say about it like uh, for security cameras we're like zoom in enhance mm-hmm. yeah okay more pixels is always better right when it comes to when it comes to um shooting you know uh, these like huge landscape photos or like mm-hmm. sides of bus billboards obviously you know giant cinema um 4k is the standard now and even though i'm still you know having a hard t- i'm still shoot a lot of stuff in 1080 even though that's 4K fine. is the standard, but they're going yeah. up to like 8K and 10K and just like 16K. these things are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, but the human eye has basically hit a point megapixel wise mm-hmm. that with, you know, 20, uh, uh, the, the camera I shoot with right now is 21 megapixels. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of them are in the like 36 megapixel range, right? You also have a 50 megapixel camera. I though. do have a 50 <laughs> megapixel camera and that 50 megapixel camera is, um, I, I will give an example of where, where more megapixels is better, but for the most part, unless you're going for a specialty type of item, mm-hmm. we have hit the point where your eye, if I print out an eight by 10 headshot, you cannot tell the difference between a a full film, which is the highest resolution you can possibly get, eight by ten, mm-hmm. versus or like a still taken from like a you know eight uh, K red versus a twenty something megapixel camera. Of like they're all the same. Your eye physically cannot tell the difference. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So like eh. It's kind of like saying um, when there's a business being like, mm, to get more business, we need to make our product better. Or to get more business, you could just like make a better shopping experience, make it easier for people to check out, better customer service, better instructions or onboarding. There's a lot of things you can do to make the experience the better thing. that yeah. doesn't need to be the thing. Like we're good on megapixels. Mm-hmm. To circle back on what you just said, though, (laughs) yes, I absolutely did buy a 50 megapixel camera and used it recently. Um, So hypocrisy, (laughs) yeah. Except, but this is this is that like specialty niche case where like I'm not going to shoot a whole wedding with my 50 50 megapixel back. Um, I was shooting tabletop, um, like like uh, like D and D mini figures, Mm -hmm. and what the company specifically needed is when you go onto Facebook or Instagram and you have that square crop, but then you can scroll through. They needed uh, five uh, basically s- s- uh, square crops that you can scroll through. So what I had to do was I had to set up one scene that then I could zoom into such a small, tiny portion of it that I could still get a very high-res square cropped image so that I could have five of these square cropped images side by side mm. so that it seamlessly tiles. And I wanted to do this all in one rather than attempting to stitch a panoramic. So I used my 50 megapixel back just to make my life yeah. easier and cropped the hell out of it see i don't have a 50 megapixel camera currently and i think that that's the threshold for me where if 50 megapixels was in everything that would be good enough and i feel like we're relatively close to that point that's we still are. that's we're still in the close. high end where 50 my megapixel, old phone had 48 well <laughs> yeah that's fair fair um we're still seeing like and i mean with no compromises right so like you're 50 megapixel back is a little bit too slow and and you know as far as like frames per yep. second a little bit too clunky to use like for a wedding um and so i feel like something right now we still see the high end is like the sony a1 where it's 50 megapixel and there aren't any compromises like video is still really good iso is still really uh, or noise performance is still really good you can shoot many you know a lot of frames per second like it does everything in a 50 megapixel back when that is like at the two thousand dollar body tier I think then good enough. Like that does everything. Like that'll solve everybody, like any need that somebody would have in an average camera. So I think we're almost there. Um, But are photos too perfect? I don't think, I don't think ever. I don't think they're ever too perfect. (laughs) (laughs) Like keep chasing the human eyes capabilities, exceed the human eyes capabilities. Like why not? Like it just, it just gives you more latitude to, explore different stuff i mean how sweet would it be to be able to shoot like in super dark you know like basically pitch black environment to be able to recover details out of that and do all sorts of crazy stuff with it like why not why not like far exceed what humans are capable of doing um why do do i need to exposure bracket when my camera's got a 30 you know yeah right like stop range yeah have a 50 stop (laughs) dynamic range why not like i don't you can always remove perfection. 
from the original image, but you can't add it. So why not start with the best possible <laughs> representation of what you're shooting, right? That's at least in my opinion. So yeah. I'm like always chase. Now, granted, I'm shooting on a camera that's say, five or six years old now. So like, I'm not somebody that's like, I will always get the latest best camera because I'm always chasing that. No, realistically, it still fits my needs just fine. However, I feel like technologically, as an industry. <laughs> yeah, as an industry, please do Keep going. better, cool stuff all the time. Especially, I feel like peripheral stuff. Like sensors are pretty good now, but better and better and better in camera stabilization. I will always be into that. Granted, oh, for sure, as more video, of a video yeah. guy. But like, yeah, but even it works for stills too. So, especially if you're shooting at like really super telephoto, um, you're shooting with this really super telephoto uh, lens. That those same uh, in-body image stabilization elements can compensate for your handshake when you're shooting telephoto. That's um, true. So you can use them for stills too. I, I think going back to the the film nostalgia, um, what it really comes down to is w with modern photos being perfect, old film cameras, you had these like light leaks and things that were artifacts. technically mistakes. Mm -hmm. And we're nostalgia for the mistakes of old. And I think you can still... I, I, I think the discussion behind this is are modern photos too perfect? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have a guest. We have a guest that has been distracting me for a while now. <laughs> Um, for those of you <laughs> listening, my dog is just running through the set today. Yeah, watch the YouTube video. Get watch bonus, the YouTube bonus video. Dog Bon bonus clip. There you go. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we're 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 nostalgic for we're artifacts, no, we're nostalgic for, for the artifacts and yeah. the mistakes, and and really now it is a choice where we can intentionally create the light leak and we can use that to draw the eye versus yeah. it was I was trying to take a good photo and oops there's a light leak because the camera lens didn't seal properly yeah. like those are two very different things. But why are we nostalgic for mistakes? I don't know, man. I mean, I don't. I'm I don't, not. I don't think I'm nostalgic for mistakes either. So I'm like, I don't get it. Like I don't know, but. We're not, I don't know, we're not uh, aesthetic TikTokers enough, I guess. We're not. <laughs> uh, my dog is also not uh, nostalgic for mistakes. He thinks uh, cameras should just keep getting better as well. Yeah. He's right there with you, Stuart. Yeah, so, you know, I think the stuff, to some degree, we've basically reached good enough. Um, but I am always game for the industry to chase, to chase better um, and more. Because why not? Like, at the very worst, that means that the, like average to crappy cameras are better because the that's high true. end has pushed that that's pushed true those capabilities bring, down. bring that floor yeah. up i mean 4k used to be like no way you have to spend you know fifty thousand dollars to get 4k a digital now it's like in everybody's phone and you know in really cheap cameras that's insane like, to yeah, me yeah. Yeah. yeah so so those kind of capabilities are why i think like at least the industry needs to keep chasing we get keep we get better stuff on the consumer end if the top end continues to exceed expectations basically so yeah i don't know we'll see i mean phones still make crazy good progress like that's another thing where you know maybe dslrs have reached good enough for the most part phones are not anywhere near actually that that is an excellent kind of like discussion for another time thing yeah. but like you make a great point that for a full frame sensor they're pretty much as good as they're going to get. We have sharp corners. We have enough. high res. They're, they're good, good enough, enough yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, they can always get better, but yeah. they're good enough. But phones, give no. give me that low light performance. Give me that megapixel count. Give, give me telephoto. Yeah, yeah. Give, give me all of those features on a, this very tiny sensor. Mm -hmm. I understand that small sensors have the physical physics limitation with like depth of field yeah. and such. But like, can you can you give me some of these capabilities and something that fits in my pocket? Yeah. But there's lots of efforts working around making like one inch sensors smaller. The whole uh, these cool like periscope lenses where actually there's like a lens that extends into the body of the phone and goes like vertically in the back of the phone, like stuff like that. Really cool developments to make better optics in a tiny sensor. So um, give me more of that, please. I would love to have my DSLR in my pocket. We're not there yet, as much as people say I've, we are. I, I've got a, a quick question for you. So I just upgraded to a Google Pixel, mm -hmm. and I know it's got a 0.5, a 1, and a 2 in the options. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are any of those optical? Uh, maybe. 
It depends <laughs> on how many uh, how many lenses are on the back of your camera or back of your phone. If you look at the back of your phone, you'll see. Yeah, I'm seeing two lenses back there. Okay, so probably the point five and, and the, the one. one is optical, and then the two is a Google has like magic cropping where they basically when your hand sh- they use your handshake at to to work on the image. So they the handshake when you're capturing at like two x. It notices your handshake, and the gyroscope in the in the phone records that movement, and it uses that to take multiple frames and create better resolution by something that you're All right, doing. Camera companies, give me more crap like yeah. that. So, like, so I was about to say, <laughs> we don't need more megapixels. We need tech like yeah, that. I was about to say, uh, <laughs> the the computational photography in phones to overcome crappy optics and sensors is amazing what phones are able to do give me that in a dslr body can you imagine if we had the computational might of a we've... phone in a dslr <laughs> yes please i know we've talked about this before just give me litro and a form factor that works yes basically <laughs> yes please <laughs> the the ability to change my focus when i miss it would be amazing the idea was so cool just, just the execution yeah. got botched yeah, yeah, um yeah yeah. Anyway, so are modern photos too perfect? No, more perfect, more perfect, <laughs> <laughs> always more perfect. Yeah, I mean, I think there are definitely aspects that they can stop driving for now. Um, not yeah. not to say that they can't get better, but more to say, uh, wh- when you walk into a business, the product doesn't necessarily get better. Make all the other things better. Make mm-hmm. the ergonomics better. Make the autofocus better. Make the low light better. Like we're fine on megapixels. Yeah. Um, corner sharpness, yeah. Yeah, that can that can always get i would love to have corner to corner sharpness mm-hmm. um a couple of my lenses still aren't quite there yet but yeah i, I think me, we're okay give me cooler glass like i feel like there's more developments to be made in glass like i tr- I, tr- I want the tiny like f28 from you know eight millimeters to 600 millimeters yeah like, in all, i want that <laughs> in all in one travel lens they can do less than like six three yeah yeah. Like that would be like, so forget whatever body I attach that to. Who cares? Just give me that glass. Yeah, no, it. for sure. So, yeah. so the stuff around the sensor. The stuff around yeah. the sensor. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I think that's what we have for today. Um, I do apologize to everyone listening for the complete brain meltdown of the dog walking through set. I just... Uh, Bonus for you, YouTube. Completely viewers. lost it there. But you know what? We're going to leave it in because... Uh, yeah, we're gonna leave it yeah, in. YouTube. No one's no one's perfect. Cute uh, animals. Uh, <laughs> uh, see what I did there? See what I did there? <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all so much for listening. Uh next week we are going to talk about a very amazingly cool piece of tech uh from Thor Love and Thunder. So stay tuned next week to check out that. Thanks for listening. If you have questions or ideas for future episodes, you can email us at hello at photo-op.show. Watch us on Ben's YouTube channel at non-creative. As in om nom nom. Share this with a friend and you can listen to Photo Op anywhere podcasts are sold. Or downloaded. Because it's free.